These are all the questions that we are going to be doing in this question, but I'm going to split them up over different pages just so we have a bit more space. So here's 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, but I'm going to have 4.1 on that slide, 4.2 on that slide, and then 4.3 over there. So let's get started. So here we have a ball X of mass. Okay, now actually before I even say that guys, um, what you wanna get into the habit of is, so here we can see that we're gonna have two objects, right? That are probably gonna be crashing into each other or they're gonna be colliding. As soon as you see that, where you've got two objects that are crashing into each other or moving apart or anything like that with two objects. The objects are not connected with a rope. If they were, then we would probably wanna use Newton's laws, F net equals MA. But here we've got two objects that are gonna crash into each other or they're gonna bounce apart or something like that. Then I instantly want you to guys to always just have in the back of your mind um, the conservation of um, linear momentum, okay? So the formula we're probably gonna to have to use just now is gonna be that one that goes, um, you know the one that's like M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial equals to M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. You know that one, right? I know I'm not writing it very neatly there, but I'm just giving you a quick little note. Um, that is what my mind does when I see a question like this, okay? Um, I instantly think, ah, oh, it's probably gonna be one of those. Okay, maybe it won't be. Uh, but let's see. I don't go through these questions before I record them. This is actually the first time I'm doing this question right now. Um, some students probably think that I, I go through the question, I do the question, I check the memo. <laughs> but I actually don't at all. This is literally, I haven't even read what this stuff says. Um, it's more fun for me to just do it naturally and um, without making little notes and stuff like that. That would be so damn boring. And... Yeah, so that's why, yeah, I'm just doing it raw, like right now with you guys. So it's probably gonna be something like that, but let's go on. So it says that we have a ball of mass 10 kilograms. Okay, so this is a 10 kilogram ball over here, and it's moving to the eastward side or eastwards with a velocity of two meters per second. It collides elastically, okay, that's important, because remember that two objects can collide, but you can get different types of collisions. You can get elastic collisions, and you can get inelastic collisions. Okay, so it collides with a ball Y of mass two kilograms. Okay, so this ball is two kilograms, which was moving with an unknown velocity. Okay, so we don't know what this ball was doing. We don't know if it was moving to the left or if it was moving to the right. Doesn't really matter, but it was moving, okay? Then it says immediately after the collision, ball X comes to a rest, okay? So it stops immediately, so it's at zero meters per second, and ball Y is gonna move uh, eastwards. Okay, so ball Y is going to move eastwards. They're showing us that with a kinetic energy of 36 joules. Okay, so the first question um, for two marks, explain the meaning of the term elastic collision. Okay, so let me just give you guys a quick little summary. Um, we get, as we said, we get two types of collisions. Um, the first one that we get is called an elastic collision. And in this one, um, the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy, um, so let's go the sum, that's a symbol for sum, like uh, sigma. So the sum of all the kinetic energy um, before the crash, so I'll say initial, is exactly the same as the sum of all the kinetic energy, um, sorry, kinetic, so it's energy, kinetic, final. So the total kinetic energy before the, um, before the crash or the collision is the same as the total kinetic energy after the collision, okay? And then we get an inelastic, inelastic collision, and this is just the opposite. This is where the sum of all the kinetic energy initially is not equal to the sum of all the kinetic energy final. So those are the two main collisions we get. And so there is the definition of an elastic collision. It is a collision in which both the total momentum and total kinetic energy are conserved. So here I was only talking about the kinetic energy. Um, I didn't talk about the um, total momentum because 
in both of these types of collisions, the momentum is always conserved. Okay, so in grade 12 questions like this, um, where you've got objects colliding, the total momentum is always conserved. And that's what I was trying to show over here. Whereas the, 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 the kinetic energy, that doesn't always have to be conserved. If it is, we call it elastic. If it isn't, then we call it inelastic. But the total momentum, that is always going to be conserved. Okay, that's the conservation of linear momentum that I referred to earlier on. Here is the next part. So it says calculate the velocity of y. So what they mean is, um, what was this one's original velocity? Okay, so we know that it's going to be one of these questions where um, we can say that the sum, that means sum, right? It's not an E. Some students always say, um, is that an E? No, it's not. That means sum like we do in sigma notation in maths. So we're saying that the sum of all of the momentum, momentum is a P, initi initial, I was going to say initi, I don't know how that even makes sense, initial, which means before the crash, will always be equal to the sum of all of the momentum after the crash. That is what we are saying, okay? Then choose a direction. So let's say that to the right is positive. You can say to the left if you want, it's not a problem. Um, right, so we can say that we've got the mass of object X multiplied by the velocity of object X. And then I'm gonna put an I. That I means initial, before the crash. Then I'm gonna say plus, because we're looking at the sum. That's how this formula works. Then we're gonna do the object Y. So the mass of Y times the velocity of Y initially equals. Now we're gonna do um, the same thing on the side, but this time around it's gonna be the F, meaning final, after the crash. And then we're gonna do the other object, Y, final. There we go. Now, okay, so now we would just go fill everything in. Um, so, okay, so the mass of object X was 10 kilograms, or is 10 kilograms. Um, its original velocity is two, so we can just say times two, plus um, the mass of object Y is a two kilogram object but we don't know what its original velocity is. And we don't need to know the direction. It'll all sort itself out and it'll tell us that just now. And then for the next part, we now need to look at the mass of object X, which is still gonna be 10 kilograms. And its final velocity was a zero. So we'll put a zero over there. Plus, now we're gonna do, okay, now this is interesting, but it's not difficult. They tell us that its kinetic energy is 36. Now we know that the formula, on our formula sheet for kinetic energy, not the change in the kinetic energy, just kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So we can say 36 equals to a half. Now the mass of that object was uh, two kilograms. And then we can say v squared. And if you had to go and work this out, you would end up with a half times two, which is just one. To get v alone, you would square root and you would get plus minus six, but we'll just take it as positive six because we know that it's going to the right hand side. And they did tell us that it moves eastwards. Okay, so we'll just keep it as six. So we can say here then, um, well, let's say V equals to um, six meters per second. And we can actually say to the, well, let's say to the east because that's what they're using here. So we can say east. Okay, so now we can just go fill this in over here as two and its velocity is six. Right, and then um, our next part would be to try calculate the velocity of y. Now, I'm just gonna go and calculate it along because that part's fairly straightforward for you guys. Right, now you should get an answer of negative four. Don't worry about the negative. What it means is that um, the velocity of y, which was this part here, it was actually originally moving to the left. So we can say four meters per second. Don't say left, say west rather, because that's what they're using west. Okay. And then question 4.3. Okay, well, let's just first remember that this one was moving four meters per second west. And we know that this is actually six meters per second. I don't know if we'll need that, but just in case. Here it says that the balls were in contact uh, for 0 0.1 second. Okay, so that's a time and then force. Right. They like to do this, guys. So whenever they have two objects, then we like to think of, like I said just now, we like to think of the conservation of momentum, right? Um, but when they start in the same question talking about time and force, then we want to use this formula here. 
and this formula is on your formula sheet, okay? So whenever they have a question like this where it's also two objects, um, not always two objects, but yeah, whenever it's one of these, um, you're gonna use this formula here because it talks about momentums, it's got the net force, which we're talking about, and it's also got time. Okay, and with practice, guys, you begin to know exactly which formula needs to be used where. If you're not at that point yet, um, it just needs more practice, okay? If your exam is tomorrow, hey, I hope that tomorrow um, you'll, you'll just remember in this type of question that you'll use that formula. Sometimes you don't need to do so many examples to know what to do, okay? So let's quickly go and do this. Um, so they say, calculate the magnitude of the force that bore X. Now, here's the important part. Bore X exerts on bore Y. So who's who are we trying to measure the force of? I mean, or which object is experiencing the force? Is it object X or is it object Y? Well, it says that bore X exerts on bore Y. So we want to know what is bore Y experiencing. So we're going to use this formula only on bore Y. You're not going to do it on bore X. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's go right down the formula. Once again, we need to choose a direction. It doesn't really matter. Let's say right is positive. And so we're going to go calculate the force. We can say F net. Now, delta P, um, if you look on your formula sheet, they also show you that that, I'll write it over here for you, delta P is just MV final minus MV initial. So let's expand it into that MV. So I go do it the wrong way. MV final minus MV initial over delta time. Okay, so F net. Okay, now we look at the mass of bore Y. We wanna use bore Y, which was two kilograms. Bore Y's final velocity was six meters per second to the right, so we can just do it like that. Um, its original velocity was four, but to the left, so you must put it as a negative because we said right is positive, but that one's going left. This is These are the little areas where students make mistakes, and then the time is 0 0.1. Go ahead, type this all in, and we end up with 200 newtons, so we can say, therefore, uh, 200 newtons to the right because we chose right as positive, and we got a positive answer.